Is it an alarm clock? Is it a Google Assistant speaker? It's both! Let's talk about the Lenovo Smart Clock. This is Twit. This episode of Hands On Tech is brought to you by Aftershocks, unbelievably comfortable open ear headphones. Hear music and crystal clear phone calls like never before. Visit hot.aftershocks.com and use code HOT for $50 off the tech bundle. Yes, this right here is a clock. It's been next to my bedside for a little while now. Um, let's see if I can mm, do The Lenovo this Smart Clock. Um, the top that you see over here has, I'm doing this all this backwards. I know, right? Has um, two volume buttons, so up and down. Very easy to feel when you're just like, have your hand over, you know, the uh, Stumbling nightstand. in the middle of the night. Yeah, <laughs> yes. exactly. All right, so yes, I'm holding the Lenovo Smart Clock. As you can see, it's very small. This is a lot smaller than you will see the Nest Hub. Um, it's actually a four inch screen. That's a 480 by 800 resolution, an IPS screen that you have right here a single ambient light sensor. It is not the same as the one that's in the Nest Hub, but it is. it, it does work to not blast your eyes at night and, you know, to stay nice and dim. So on the back is a hard physical mute button. So mic mute, mic unmute. And we've also got a USB-A port for charging your phone. I charge my Galaxy Active Watch with this. Kind of saves on some space from the ports that I have by my bed. Oh, yeah, that's nice. um, so even though it looks like a mini little Nest Hub, it doesn't actually match it in features. Or the Home Mini, which is kind of what this carpet effect yeah, it's 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 <laughs> Google's, it's Google's carpet aesthetic, thing. which it's yeah. nice. It's a very like it blends in nicely with the home. It looks really nice in my yeah. in my bedroom. Like I don't mind it as far as style goes. Um, Did all of the industrial designers go to the same school? Because you're seeing that on everything now. Yeah. yeah. Well, to be fair. I mean, anybody who studied the school of Johnny Ive is making things look like the way Johnny Ive wants it. So I imagine it's the same now for Google Assistant right. Project products, right? Yeah. Um, just yeah. to kind of keep everything. So the nice thing about this is it's got a, because it's a clock, it's got a helpful little uh, button here in the corner and that will take you directly to all of your alarms. <sighs> Sorry about the glare, mm -hmm. folks. Um, there are, let's see, 10 different clock designs. You can just hold down and press on it like on Wear OS. And then you can look through the different faces. I not really feel in all of these faces and I wish that they could be a little more customizable. Um, but for now, this one is pretty good. It tells you the time. It tells you the weather up here. Um, it has a background that matches the weather. So you'll see if it's foggy or sunny based on your little wallpaper. You can, hmm. That's supposed to go to the settings. Okay, well, it goes to the alarm clock. And <laughs> here's how the alarm clock works. So just like on your Android phone, you would go into the alarm clock option. You would choose when to repeat. You would choose the tone. These are different tones that we have on the Pixel phones, for instance. Um, and because there's like a tiny little subwoofer in here, they get very loud. I, I have a feeling this has been particularly tuned to wake you up in the morning because I was <laughs> I was surprised. As loud as possible. This got me going a lot uh, quickly compared to the Pixel alarm that I usually have by my bedside, which is why I actually really would much prefer waking up to this now mm. than the phone. Um, you can set a sunrise alarm, which is when it lights up the screen. And then if you're... I guess if your head is right next to it, that would kind of help kinda you. Kind of lights up the room a little lights bit. Up the hue room bulbs. A little the, bit. You can do that with hue bulbs as yeah, well. Yeah, sort of like gradual. But, yeah, gradual. Effective. The yeah. thing is, guys, I sleep with my window curtains open so I can get up with the sun. So I have no idea if it works or not. I can't tell you. But I can tell you that the Google Assistant routine works. It only does the good morning routine though, which is a real bummer. So you have to go into the home app and you have to specifically set this routine for what you want it to do. Um, so I set it like up- news or something like that? I have it to turn on certain lights in my bedroom and start up some lights in the other parts of the room and to like read my agenda. And also to, I will go in every other night and change the podcast so I can get like a different podcast every mm -hmm. couple of 
mornings. So, you know, I like, I try to customize it, but I wish that I could have it be a little more programmable than that. Um, there's no camera on this, so you don't have to worry about anybody looking Thank in. Thank you. It's not helping. It's not happening. <laughs> um, Probably a good idea not to have a camera in, in your uh, alarm yeah, Especially because you're sleeping with it right next to your yeah, head. Yeah, exactly. Like, it, it's literally right next to my head. This episode of Hands-On Tech is brought to you by Aftershocks. Aftershocks headphones use patented bone conduction technology. They rest just outside your ear and produce sound by sending vibrations through your cheekbones. And that bypasses your eardrum. Their lightweight titanium wraparound headband has wireless Bluetooth 4.1 connectivity and multi-point pairing. They're also IP55 certified to repel sweat, dust, and moisture. Perfect for the gym. Order an Aftershocks tech bundle now at hot.aftershocks.com and use code HOT at checkout to get $50 off. Offer valid in the U.S. only. That's hot.aftershocks.com and make sure and use code HOT. So I have two assistants in my room right now. I have the Google Home speaker up by the TV, which is hooked up with a Chromecast. And I have this by my head. And because I've linked them in the Google Home app, any command that I give this goes straight to my Google Home speaker. So if I want to play music, it'll go there instead of playing out of this. So I'm not actually getting any audio out of this. It's pretty much acting as a controller in my bedroom. Hmm. If you don't set it up that way though, it still works kind of like a Nest Hub. So um, everybody close your, uh, have your, close your microphones cause I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna call on Google's. Google, play some 90s music. So Spotify playlist. Arrgh. Okay, it's playing on the speaker at my house. Because <laughs> it's linked up to your house. Yeah, I tried to unlink controller. it before the show happened, but clearly Google stopped casting. Because now your my husband is like, "Why is no, there suddenly '90s music?" It's playing only, in our only house? the cat. She's getting '90s music okay. right now. Um, I will say this screen very easy to just kind of paw at when you're very tired and can't really see it in the morning. Uh, like I said, the alarms are really loud, so you will get up with this. And they're gradual, too. So you'll get the gradual feature the way that you would on your Pixel phone if you would choose that. Um, because I have listened to the speaker quality, although I can't directly cast it now, I will say it's about on par with the Home Mini. However, oh, okay. you're going to find from the Google Home app and from the casting um, mechanism that you can't cast a lot of stuff to this. So maybe you wanna just hear podcasts out of it. That's fine, that'll work. But if you wanted to catch up on YouTube TV, I it doesn't give me the option to cast it to this. So can you watch any YouTube video on this at all? I don't think you can because oh. every time I look for it, it's yes. not available. And and now I'm saying this. I see that as a feature. Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> saying I'm thinking that's a feature because <laughs> they don't want you to do that. And so yeah, when you read when yeah. you read reviews, you'll uh, when you read reviews like from The Verge, they'll say you know this doesn't have the same feature set as the Nest Hub, and that's what it means mm -hmm. is that you're not going to get this like perfect sense. Yeah, if you're not you're gonna get a to tiny. Use it as a bedside clock or what have you. You don't need that extra distraction with video. Use yeah. it as a clock. Yeah, it's true. But some of us have trouble sleeping at night and wish that they could like <laughs> watch real low some Pluto TV to try and go back to sleep. <laughs> um, well, you still have your phone to do that. Yeah, However, I just do you it did on my that phone. before, you could still do that. Yeah, I just do it on my phone. But it just feels. <laughs> It's excessive how many of these things I have in my room right now. Um, but it's my job. It's my job to live with them so that you don't have to. <laughs> Man, for me personally, I see that as a total feature. Like that's what keeps me from getting one of these smart screens is that they play YouTube and my kids will not be able to resist um, the they temptation. They play music, but they don't. Yeah. Uh, mu music, great, fine. My yeah. kids can play music, well, maybe not all hours of the, of the night, but they can play music and I don't care. I really like uh, this. That's YouTube that I want to not have. I think it's one of those, there's a time and place for everything, situations, and this is them saying, you know what, we are a clock. We're going to give you a few smart features to make your morning just a little bit better, a little more efficient, a little more peppy, but we are a clock and we're not your entertainment device kind of thing. Right. Well, but it is an entertainment portal because if you, like me, have a whole situation in your bedroom set up with different casting devices, you right. will have this act as the centralized controller. I also really like it because it knows which lights I have in my room because I have it all 
all programmed in, uh, you know, the Hue app and in the Google Home app. And so I'll be able to actually control the nightstand that's next to me from this right next to my head, which I kind of like okay. go in and like adjust the lights. Um, it's so much more convenient than sometimes talking out loud. But speaking of talking out loud, so waking up, what if you want to snooze? You know, you want to sleep another 10 minutes, which I do like five times every morning. Unfortunately, <laughs> you still have to say, hey, G, um, to do that. So in that sense, this is actually more effective at getting you up in the morning than your phone because you actually have to talk to it. Yeah. Um, you can roll over and hit the, uh, the on-screen snooze button, but who wants to do that when you're like all curled up in your pillows and blankets? Like that's the last thing you're going to do. So it's, you know, it's, it's a little thing, but also helps you get up in the morning. Uh, you can control this with the Google Home app for Android. And if there are any iOS users out there watching, you can also control it with your iPhone. And it's 80 bucks everywhere alarm clocks are sold. If you're wondering whether you should get this, maybe save your money and apply it towards the discounted Nest Hub. You're going to find that thing is going down in price these days. Um, that doesn't have a camera. It has a seven inch screen. It's a little bit louder than this one. So if what you want is something to really like groove and jam to and also watch YouTube TV wherever you are, then that is worth the extra money. Because again, for 80 bucks, that's that's a lot for an alarm clock. Um, that's a lot from yeah. the days of our Sanyo alarm clocks and our Sony alarm clocks that were a mere 25 bucks. So. Wow, she said Sanyo. <laughs> I did. I said Sanyo. <laughs> My mom still has her Sanyo from like 1985. It's, that's what's up. It's still around. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm going to keep it next to my head. I like it. It's a cute little gadget. It is. Of course it charges my point. watch. Question for you re regarding it being like your command center. So yes, yes. you get an on screen interface where you can tap to say, I need to turn on my vanity light, you know, yes. or I need to. Let me show so you a it's, demo. It's all on screen. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm about, about to actually, Jason, if you swipe from the top down. Okay. You should. Yeah, there oh. you go. You can see, you can play music. So if you want to, um, you can turn the bedroom lights on. Okay. Your bedroom lights are now on. Okay. I think. Yeah, they are. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm I don't actually know certain. that for sure, but I'm I assuming. mean, I could check in and see if they are with the millions of security cameras in my house, uh, but I'm not going to do that. If, but see, music. it's going to play music on the... On your speakers no. at home. No. Because that's what you got to connect it to, right? No problem. Music on Spotify. Here you go. Okay. Oh. I bet we get you it. You fixed now. it, maybe. Hey. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good. Yes, it was perfect. Yes, okay, good. I'm I'm happy that the uh, Lenovo smart clock has good taste in music. Oh you can goodness. groove to this while oh, yeah. you're I can't showering help it. and getting ready for the day. Music. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, and you get a little album art. Yeah. Here, I'll go ahead and turn it down just a... I mean, oh, you nice. know, <laughs> the, the sound isn't like It's a amazing. bedroom speaker. But it's not horrible. Yeah, it's like for the bedroom. Yeah. I mean, if this is right next to your head, this is how you wake up in the morning, you're going to get out of bed. So unfortunately, of bed you can't wake up to music. Oh. There's no like Spotify integration uh, or anything like that. Like I would like to see some specialized oh, integration wow. happening with the smart clock universe. Yeah, that would be really nice. Like, yes, there should there should really be yeah. wake up to music on this thing. Yeah. That's like a feature request that needs to happen. I yeah. mean, that honestly, would... Spotify should just code it into its <laughs> yeah. assistant app, maybe. Cool. So, I mean, uh, like broad strokes for the cost. I think you know, there's somebody out there that wants like a simple smart clock. This is a good buy. But for others, maybe think about the larger size. You know what? If you're buying this for, if you want to buy this for like a parent, uh, maybe an elderly parent, I would suggest maybe looking at the saving your money and looking at the Nest Hub because at least that one, you can watch TV on it. Yeah. This one is kind of limited in scope of what can do. But if you find it on sale, I mean, this is a fun thing to have in the house. I just think it needs a little more functionality to kind of be worth the 80 full dollars. Yeah. 80 bucks is a lot. This is a $50? Think this is a $50 device? I pay $50. Yeah, for I would pay yeah. only 50 for this. I, I feel like this is on par with the um, the home minis. 
Okay. Yeah. That's what I was thinking too. Or maybe 65, like, but 80, 80 you know what feel, I mean? 80 feels a little much for this. Yeah. 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 I would, I would completely agree. Uh, cool. That is the Lenovo smart clock. Thanks for uh, walking through that. Thank you. Love it. Keep up with all the hottest tech news and gadgets. Visit twit.tv. There you'll be able to find and subscribe to all our tech shows. Thanks for watching Hands on Tech.